This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is an introduction to polar coordinates. Given a point x, y, we recognize that this distance is x and this distance is y. We define polar coordinates r and theta. r will be the distance from the origin to the point x, y. You'll recognize in this case r is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And theta is the angle as measured from the x-axis up to that radial line r. Well, looking at this, what do we recognize? Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is x divided by r. Sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of theta is y divided by r. Well, sol solving for x, we get x is r cos theta. Solving for y, we get y is r sine theta. So that enables us to solve for both x and y. Let's go ahead and do a conversion. If I have the point r is 3 and theta is 7 pi over 6, so our distance from the origin to that point is 3, and theta is 7 pi over 6, so all the way into the third quadrant. We want to convert that to rectangular coordinates. So this is what we're given. We know that cosine of theta is x over r. So r times the cosine of theta will be x. r3 cos of theta cos of 7 pi over 6. But that's in the third quadrant. And the reference angle is pi over 6. In the third quadrant, the cosine is negative. The reference angle, pi over 6, Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So putting all that together, this piece will be negative root 3 over 2. So we have 3 times negative root 3 over 2, which will, of course, give us an x of negative 3 root 3 over 2. Now the sine of theta is y over r, so that r sine theta is y. So r 3 times the sine of 7 pi over 6. Again, in the third quadrant, the sine will also be negative. The reference angle here is pi over 6, and the sine of pi over 6 is a half. Third quadrant making it negative. So we get y is 3 times negative 1 half, or y is negative 3 halves. So if we're given r is 3 and theta is 7 pi over 6, we can convert that to x is negative 3 root 3 over 2, and y is negative 3 over 2. Now what's our other way of looking at this? We have our same triangle, x this distance, y this distance, r here. We can see this is indeed a right triangle, so x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then r is, of course, the square root of x squared plus y squared. And what about theta? Well, if I'm given x and y, and I want to find theta, the way to do that would be to look at the tangent. So the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent of theta is y over x. Therefore, theta would be the arctangent of y over x. So if given x and y, and we want to find r and theta, these two rules will get us there. So let's look at an example. I am given the point 3 on x, negative 3 root 3 on y. So visualizing this 3 on x, negative 3 root 3 on y, would put us in the fourth quadrant. We want to convert that to polar coordinates. How are we going to do it? Starting here, we know x squared plus y squared is r squared. x, 3, 3 squared is 9. How about negative 3 root 3 squared? Well, a negative number squared will give us a positive number. 3 squared is 9. Root 3 squared is 3. 9 times 3 is 27. So you'll see that we're going to get 3 squared plus 3 root 3 squared. Let me fix that typo. And indeed that's fixed. So 3 squared plus quantity negative 3 root 3 squared is r squared. Which gives us 9 plus 27 is r squared. 36 is r squared. And of course r will be 6 in this case. The distance from the origin to that point indeed will be positive, will be 6. So the tangent of theta is y over x, opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta will be the y value divided by the x value. 
negative 3 root 3 over 3, or negative root 3. But remember, the x value is positive and the y value is negative, and that tells us something about the location of that angle theta. Our reference angle, of course, is pi over 3, because the tangent of pi over 3 is root 3. But what is our quadrant of interest? Our quadrant of interest is quadrant 4. x is positive and y is negative. So if I'm in quadrant 4 with a reference angle of pi over 3, where is that going to put me? 2 pi minus pi over 3, or 5 pi over 3. So I have my value r is 6, and I have my value theta is 5 pi over 3. So we're able to convert from our rectangular coordinate form, 3 comma negative 3 root 3, to our polar form of r equals 6, and theta is 5 pi over 3. So the next thing we want to do is we want to convert this to rectangular coordinates, and we want to describe its shape. So I have r equals 6 times the cosine of theta. What do we know? x squared plus y squared is r squared. We know the tangent of theta is y over x. We know x is r cos theta. We know y is r sine theta. So putting that together, what can we say? Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by r. So we'll say r squared is 6r cos theta. Now, r squared is x squared plus y squared. r cos theta is x, so we can say x squared plus y squared is 6x. We have successfully converted this into rectangular coordinates, but I want to describe its shape, and this is a circle. So let's do a little bit more analysis to figure out how this circle is going to behave. To do that, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And then I have to complete the square. Half of 6x is 3. 3 squared is 9. Add 9 to both sides. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 9 on this side, plus y squared, is 0 plus 9 on that side. Again, completing the square, half of the linear term squared. Now when I factor this, this is x minus 3 quantity squared. So I get x minus 3 quantity squared plus y squared is 9. This is a circle centered where? At 3 comma 0, centered at 3, 0, with a radius square root of 9 with a radius of 3. So indeed, that is our description of the shape of this sort of problem. So r equals a cos theta, r equals a sine theta will generate circles. That's one of our favorite forms of polar coordinate graphs. Let's take a look at this one. It says convert the following equation to rectangular coordinates and describe its shape. So theta is pi over 6. Think about it. In our polar graph, the angle with the x-axis is always pi over 6. It certainly feels like it should be a line. Now what do we know? We know the tangent of theta is y over x. So if theta is pi over 6, the tangent of pi over 6 should be y over x. Tangent is sine over cosine. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Putting those together, I get 1 over root 3 is y over x. And then multiplying both sides by x, that would just be x over root 3 equals y, or y equals x over root 3, which is a line thinking y equals mx plus b, b is going to be 0, which means it's a line through the origin with a slope of 1 over root 3. So that's the shape of the polar equation theta equals pi over 6. The next one we want to look at is r equals 3 sec theta. So what do we know? Sec theta is 3 divided by cosine theta. If I multiply by cosine theta, that would give me r cosine theta is 3. But what is r cosine theta? That's just x. So I get the equation x equals 3. So for this, r equals 3 sec theta, we just get a vertical line. x equals 3 is a vertical line that goes through 3. So I just listed a few points here, 3, 0, 3, 2, 3, negative 5 that vertical line will be the polar graph r equals 3 sec theta. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is how we draw a graph. 
in polar coordinates. So the example I have here is r equals 4 sine theta. Now I chose some values for theta, values typically that we see in a polar graph. So I chose 0, sine of 0 is 0, so 4 times that is 0. Sine of pi over 6 is a half, 4 times a half is 2. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Multiply that by 4 and I get 2 root 2, or approximately 2.8. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Multiply that by 4 and I get 2 root 3, or about 3.464. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Sine of 3 pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. Multiply that by 4, we get 2 root 2. Sine of pi is 0 times 4 is 0. So I want to graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, these 7 points to identify if there is some kind of a pattern here that I can work with. So we're going to pull out a polar graph paper and go ahead and identify where these points are. So 0, 0. R is 0. If R is 0, it doesn't matter what theta is, we are at the origin. So you'll notice the first dot here. Second situation is theta is pi over 6, so 30 degrees out, R is 2. You'll notice here r is 1, here r is 2. So this point is our second example, pi over 6 for theta, 2, 4, r. Our third example here is pi over 4 and about 2.8. So pi over 4 is 45 degrees and about 2.8. 1, 2, a little short of 3, 2.8, you can see right about there is this dot. So that's theta is pi over 4 and r is 2 root 2. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. And we're going out 2 root 3, 3.4, so beyond 3. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit beyond 3. There's our 3.464 for pi over 3. Then pi over 2, we're all the way out to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll see the dot there. Now I could have done dots on all of these, but I think you could probably recognize, especially since sine is going to behave the same way, that there'll be a matching point over here, there'll be a matching point here, which we can actually see. There'll be a matching point here. But we get an idea about what this graph looks like. So to complete this graph, we're going to go ahead and connect the dots from this point to this point to this point to this point to this point, and then it actually finishes back here. So what does that look like? Looks like this. Again, there's our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points that we started with. And you'll notice that indeed this is going to be a circle. As we said earlier, r equals a sine theta, r equals a cosine theta will indeed be circles. So when you're graphing functions in a polar scheme, choose various values of theta, find their corresponding values of r, plot the points, and then connect them as best you can. And that will conclude this lesson.